Welcome back to our call on the internet. Okay, so tonight we have this vid by Sunny V2 and it's called Child Celebrities uh, Who Have Terrible Lives Now. Ooh. Yeah, being a child star is not always cracked up to be, is it? Right? Imagine that, having that microscope on you at a young age. Damn. But yeah, I don't... The only people that I could think probably on here, I don't know 100% they're going to be on here, is Orlando Brown and Amanda Bynes. There might be more too. Obviously, there surely could be more than that, obviously. Who are kidding? Of course there is. But I can't think of any right now because uh, there's too many that that fit that criteria. But yeah, sure. Well, I further ado, I'm about to get into this reaction. <clears throat> This video will cover six child stars who had a terrible life after fame. Six. And we're going to begin by talking about Jake Lloyd, who played Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Jake was chosen to play Anakin from 3,000 potential <clears throat> candidates and would perform so well in the billion dollar movie that he won the best performance in a feature film for an actor under the age of 10. While this might have implied that Jake had a promising film career ahead of him, he'd appear in only one more movie after Star Wars before announcing his acting retirement at the age of 12, explaining that he was bullied heavily as a result of the role. My entire school life was really a living hell and I mm. had to do up to 60 interviews a day. Other children were really mean to me. They would make the sound of the lightsaber every time they saw me, with this kind of harassment even continuing into Jake's high school and college experience. You know how they can mm. be in high school. They're so charming and intelligent. College has been similar. They wouldn't let it go. In other interviews, Jake had been warned about the common path taken by child celebrities Child stars have had a bit of a, of a reputation and they turn to, you know, like a drug, so may the force be with you. Oh, well, thank you. Yet this advice seemed to have no impact as his life began to go downhill beginning in 2015. Jake Lloyd has schizophrenia, stopped taking his medication and oh. attacked his mother. Indianapolis police were called to the home no. of Lloyd's mother, Lisa. She said the 26-year-old showed up and yelled at her saying she ruined his life. Lloyd allegedly knocked her down when she wouldn't let him in the house and stopped her three or four times causing bruises and abrasions. He was gone by Shit. the time the police showed up and she didn't press charges. Only three months later, Jake Lloyd found himself in a high-speed police chase, after which he'd be arrested for reckless driving, driving without a license and resisting arrest, resulting in 10 months jail time in a psychiatric facility. Two years after this, Jake's 26-year-old sister Madison died unexpectedly in her sleep, prompting the mother to release a statement regarding Jake's well-being. Jake has been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, but unfortunately he also has a symptom called anosognosia which causes a lack of insight into his illness. This only adds to the struggle he faces which has been very difficult after the tragic loss of his younger sister Madison. Yeah. He has moved closer to his family and we are all working hard to help him with this. He is still a kind and caring person and we hope to have him back to his fun and entertaining self as soon as possible. Jake will continue to make progress with the love and support you continue to show which is promising when compared to the life of Edward Furlong. After playing John Connor in the Terminator 2, Furlong began to mess with drugs, <coughs> including Hollywood F me up, man. Lots of money and lots of free coke will turn anybody into a cokehead, with this addiction resulting in his first arrest for driving under the influence without a license. Furlong attended rehab as a result of the incident oh. and was able to stay sober for a number of years. However, by 2009, he, he was back in the news for punching his girlfriend whilst on drugs. Three years later, Furlong was arrested again, no. this time for domestic abuse against his new girlfriend, resulting in a further six months in prison where he'd pick up a meth addiction, although this story oh. actually has somewhat of Whoa. This one really has had a fall from grace, hasn't it? Fucking hell. A happy ending. In July 2020, yeah, yeah, six ending. months in prison where he'd pick up a meth addiction, although this story actually has somewhat of a happy ending. In July 2022, Furlong announced that he had gotten his teeth fixed, was taking better care of himself, and had been sober for over four years. Then fuck for that. Now, man. 
I mean, it feels so good to uh, at least be doing the best you can. Although this kind of happy ending has been unavailable to Drake Bell, uh, whose life has only gotten worse every single year since he starred in Drake and Josh. In 2014, approximately seven years after the show came to an end, Drake Bell announced that he was filing for bankruptcy, causing a foreclosure on his $2 million mansion. One year later, in 2015, he'd be jailed for four days as a result of driving under the influence. However, the real drama didn't begin until mid-2020, when his ex-girlfriend would upload a video on TikTok, making some pretty severe accusations. Imagine the worst type of verbal abuse you could ever imagine, and that was what I got. It then turned into physical, hitting, throwing, everything. Um, at the pinnacle of it, he drug me down the stairs of our house in Los Feliz. My face hit every step on the way down. Drake Bell would defend himself by stating, I never abused my ex-girlfriend or did so many of the other things Melissa falsely claimed on her TikTok video. Unfortunately, we both called each other terrible names as often happens when couples are breaking up but that is it although this response most certainly didn't put an end to the drama as there was even bigger trouble just around the corner an article titled drake bell's alleged victim accuses him of grooming explained that he was embroiled in a legal battle for engaging in a relationship with a 15 year old girl back in 2017 oh yeah i heard it came even worse oh yeah i heard about this this just disgusting Yeah, I also didn't follow it closely though. Damn. Footage of the trial was uploaded to YouTube. I plead to count two disseminating matter harmful to juveniles, first degree misdemeanor. Guilty. Let the record reflect defendant has pled guilty. The court accepts that plea. And while he would plead guilty to child endangerment, Drake Bell would then take to his Instagram to insinuate that he hadn't done anything wrong. I don't believe the media. If these claims were remotely true, my situation would be very different. I would not be here at home with my wife and, uh, and my son. Despite finishing by stating that he was at home with his wife, this relationship would last only one more year, as in January 2023, on top of everything that had already happened, Drake Bell announced that he was also getting a divorce. Oh. Considering he's acted in only two productions since 2020, it's safe to say that Drake Bell's reputation is pretty much finished, although he's not the only Nickelodeon actor with a spot in this video, as the life of Amanda Bynes has descended into an even worse version of hell. Better use plus 500. What? Because trading with plus 500, it's like playing bridge for the first time. Plus, that's my grandma's on your team. Hi, Grandma. Plus 500. It's trading with a plus. Despite having one of the most famous faces throughout the 2000s, Amanda Bynes would announce her retirement from acting in 2010, stating that being an actress isn't as fun as it may seem. If I don't love something anymore, I stop doing it. I don't love acting anymore, so I've stopped doing it. I know 24 is a young age to retire, but you heard it here first. She'd go on to state that the retirement was because I literally couldn't stand my appearance in Easy A and I didn't like my performance. I was absolutely convinced that I needed to stop acting after seeing it. However, this is where things began to go downhill rapidly. In 2012, two years after retiring, she was charged with driving under the influence and hit and run on two separate occasions. Two years after this, she'd be charged with driving under the influence again, with her court appearance displaying a significant physical decline from just two years prior. In the process, Amanda would take to Twitter to call Michelle and Barack Obama ugly before stating that she and her parents were no longer speaking, which accompanied some absolutely wild accusations about her father, including the statement that he had put a microchip in her brain. After she'd also set fire to a driveway, Amanda was put in a mental hospital, Jesus after which her parents were given legal ownership over her $5 million estate, as Amanda has been spending large amounts of her savings. It has been reported that she's recently made extensive purchases as gifts from jewelry stores, such as Cartier, for strangers. Amanda Bynes was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and would attempt to get her life back on track by enrolling in fashion school. However, she was kicked out only 10 months later later for showing up high and arguing with her classmates. In 2018, people assumed that she was back to her normal self, as Amanda showed up in magazines looking like this. However, within a year, she'd gotten face tattoos and checked into Alcoholics Anonymous, where she'd meet her new boyfriend who, according to Amanda, had just as many problems as her. In October 2022, she'd make another attempt at fixing her life by enrolling in cosmetic school, yet only five months later, in March 2023, she was sent to a mental hospital once again, as she was found roaming the streets of Los Angeles without any clothes on. 
Then there was Orlando Brown, whose role as Eddie Thomas on That's So Raven ended with an equally terrible life. After the show came to an end in 2007, Orlando began to focus on music, during which his life was kept fairly private until he'd enter news headlines approximately nine years later. Between February and March 2016, Brown was arrested on two separate occasions on charges of domestic violence, obstruction of justice, drug possession with the intent to sell, and possession of contraband in jail. In February 2016, cops claimed he struck his then-girlfriend in the parking lot of a police station and was found by officers to be in possession of methamphetamine. Orlando was given a notice to appear in court, yet he instead Christ. fled to Las Vegas, where he was he caught fucking by looks bounty high, hunters. Bro. You left California. It's a felony when you flee. You, what, what are you doing? You know, Orlando was given a notice to appear. Seriously, look at this boy. Donny, the Donny looks high. Jesus Christ. Disney and Nickelodeon and that shit. They really will chew you up and spit you out. And then you're left um, on a rapid decline. Wow. Wow. More story being a child actor. Or child star, if you will, is not all it's cracked up to be. Court, yet he'd instead flee to Las Vegas, where he was caught by bounty hunters. You left. Bounty hunters? It's a felony when you flee. You, what, what are you doing here then, brother? You got a warrant for your arrest. After which things only became worse. A video was released of Orlando being kicked out of a friend's house after lasting only a week in rehab, which was followed by his appearance on the Dr. Phil show, during which he'd state that he'd been sober for four years, despite clearly being under the influence on the show. I'm four years sober for a reason. I just now got out of rehab. I just now got out of an ER. I just got out of, I'm not doing. You sound out of it, no bro. Time away from my kids. I'm Quit lying. As a result of this episode, Orlando would return to rehab and get clean before discussing his experience on the No Jumper podcast. I had two year binge of something that I should have never ever indulged in. Meth. Yes. Those situations, man, they they will never happen again based off of the fact that where I'm trying to go. And while he'd end his statement by stating that those situations will never happen again, Orlando was back in the news approximately seven. Seven months later in December 2022 after threatening a family member with a hammer. He's currently undertaking a psychiatric assessment to see if he's eligible for pleading insanity. Yet the most tragic story of child fame without a doubt comes from Judy Garland who played Dorothy Gale in The Wizard mm -hmm. of Oz at the age of 16. Whilst filming the movie she was prescribed amphetamines to keep up with the production's grueling schedule as well as barbiturates to help her sleep when the day was finally over. The studio also required Judy to stay incredibly thin, feeding her nothing but soup and lettuce leaves whilst on set, which she'd explained led to a poor self-image. Mm. By the time The Wizard of Oz was finished, she was being prescribed amphetamines from four different doctors to keep her weight down and her mood up, although this lifestyle began to catch up to her. Drugs, getting up late, coming in late to work, and it turned into a nightmare for everybody concerned. She'd be fired from three different movies for intoxication and was constantly in the news for being completely broke. Her kids stated that the family couldn't even afford food at times, which accompanied angry slurred messages about being paid for work. Oh, These weren't delusions. She was broke when she recorded this, and not movie star down to my last Rolls Royce broke, homeless broke. No money to buy food broke. By the time Judy Garland was in her 40s, she looked about 15 years older, had been divorced five different times, and was performing in a New York bar for $100 per night. While Judy Garland maintained that she had never done anything wrong in her entire life. The only mistake I ever did, the only harm I ever did was sing over the rainbow. She would die of an overdose at the age of 47 on the exact same drug that she was prescribed during The Wizard of Oz, with her estate being worth a measly $40,000. Damn. Oof. Yeah, that that last one is probably the most saddest one out of the lot. Put, put the cruel irony of it though. Same drugs they put her on, same drugs that that she died from. That shit's tragic. See this type of shady shit. Oh, man. And it's not right to come see what you're saying right now, but this, but this shit is sad, man. That last one was massively sad. Someone said, I'm so glad Macaulay Culkin managed to get his life back on track. I know he'll, I know, I know we'll probably never see him in a movie again, but, but it was so awesome uh, to see his turnaround. Yeah, he really turned his life around. I saw it in a, 
don't remember who's I remember was a decent I'll react to a video about it. They happened to Macaulay Culkin. But yeah, he um he really turned his life around, didn't he? Yeah, being being a child star is not is not all it's cracked up to be, right? Especially with like the parents squandering your money and yeah, yeah, because you know you've got some momagers and dadagers that are like that. Where all they think about is the money, they don't even take their child into consideration. It's mad. It's like they're trying to live vicariously through their child. It's fucked up. So, so I said, uh, someone commented, Orlando Brown's uh, story is sad. Uh, not just because of his decline in drug addiction, but because even to this day, people continue to interview him and put him in front of cameras, knowing uh, that he's going to show up high <laughs> so that people can see him act crazy. They're creating entertainment from this man's suffering. Yeah. Anyway, uh, as a as a former meth addict, I I know how near impossible it is to uh, to get off that evil substance. It it, ch it changes your entire personality and it costs you everything, and you still won't even care because it's just ridiculously addictive. I hope this man can break free from uh, from addiction because. Uh, he's actually a very talented and funny actor. Yeah, he was funny on that, so Raven. But yeah. And I had, what is it, um, to try to get him on um, one of them Zeus Network shows. What was it? Was it Bad Boys Club or some show like that? And it's like, damn, that's going to take full advantage of this guy. They're just going to, they're just going to, they're probably going to keep him drugged up just to, just to get pictures of him looking crazy. No limits. That shit's mad. But yeah, Lindsay Lohan also got her life together as well. It's crazy how these child, about how these child stars, right? How, how they fall from grace. Some have turned their lives around, some haven't. Unfortunately, these ones have not. And one of them, it was too late for them to turn things around. But yeah, rest in peace, Judy. But yeah, let's, let's hope that, um, that the other ones that are still alive and kicking could actually, um, Hopefully turn things around, but I guess we'll just have only time will tell. But yeah, this this shit's insane. But yeah, I gotta go. I, this shit's just sad. Okay, so that's it for this video. Like, subscribe if you want. I post it if I feel like it, and I'll see you next one. Bye.